Ha, ha. Going live on Facebook. <laughs> um, all right, guys, let's guess. I'm guessing we're live. So what's up, Facebook? My name is Miro. I'm the founder of Manifest X and the author of Manifest X. And I help, you know, high achieving top performers, entrepreneurs, coaches, speakers, healers, consultants to 10x their income, impact and inspiration. So they can effortlessly and with ease add six figures to their bottom line and profits without burning out. And I'm here partnered up with my boy, Scott. Yeah. Scott, talk to us. Who are you and everything? Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Scott. I'm the founder and coach at Peak Prosper. I work with high-performing, adventurous men to help them transform their lives and level up their health, wealth, happiness, relationships, and their business. Boom. Moves, dude. And I'm so excited to chat with you, brother, because every time we do, man, we just drop so many knowledge bombs and always learning from you. Um, and today's subject is well, what are we talking about today scott and we're going to talk about the self-sabotage hamster wheel that holds us back from really stepping into the person that we want to be and taking our lives to the next level we're going to talk about the grind and the blender and how that perception of if we just work harder we will get more of the results that we desire okay break some of those down Let's break it down, man. I know there's a lot of good juicy stuff. By the way, is anybody watching right now? Drop some love, drop, drop some drop some hearts because because people pay this man hundreds of dollars to spend an hour with him. And so maybe thousands, I don't know. If you raise your prices since your last chat, you, you, keep, you tend to keep raising your prices, <laughs> which I love. Uh, I'm all for it. Um, but um, so let's, let's drop him some love and some engagement and some comments so that more people see it and get the value. Um, so... So yeah, and also too, when you're tuning in, drop a hashtag live or hashtag future if you're dropping in from the future. It's always fun. So talk to me, like if I if I start working so hard, everything will fall apart. Like talk to me about the grinder. What is that? Man, it's it's doing more and more and more of the same things, expecting exponential growth and feeling like everything is just this never ending marathon. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of the guys that I work with they believe that there's a finish line and they're, they're sweating. They're working really, really hard to get to this perceptual finish line that just does not exist. Mm -hmm. so we're all on this, this journey in life and business to evolve, dissolve the person that we were, become the person that's capable of turning our next level dreams into a reality. And the fact is that if we continue doing what we did, we'll get what we got. And I know mm -hmm. the people that are tuned in today want something different th than what they currently have. And the fact is, Miro, like we got to stop doing what we were doing to get something new. If we just do a exponential amount more of the same tasks or tactics or strategies that we did in the past, we're, we're not going to break through. So, I mean, that, that grind, I believe, is experienced when we feel like we're getting little to no traction in the direction that we really want to be going. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a result of doing more of the same tasks, tactics, and strategies that got us to where we presently are. Yeah, dude. So that's so, so fresh. Like I've just recently had so many conversations where that's so present in people's minds and hearts. And I'm going through cycles of this myself. And so, you know, like what's really, what's really happening? Like we start thinking that, oh, if only I have more money, you know, I have more whatever, like getting more clients even you know like oh i just need more clients need more clients like what what, what have you done you know what have you just like slow down <laughs> take a breath and check in like what's actually going on and part of it is also like being grateful and i'd love to know you know some some tips you know what's what's been working for you but like one of the things like everyone here can stop, like right now you can stop pretending that you're not rich you know what i mean Stop pretending that you're not like abundant. I think that's a big thing because like as top performers, you know, we're always, you know, we've turned this little belief of like not good enough, you know, and turn it into something that can drive us into positivity, into accomplishments, into success and everything. Because, you know, when, when you cre create great success where most people stop, you know, probably if you're watching this, where most people stop, you kind of kept going because that's not enough for me. I'm not settling here, you know? which is great because now you're creating an empire, right? You're creating something, a mission, something greater than you. And it can also be a trap, you know? So like your superpower can turn into your kryptonite because you cannot get enough of what you don't really need. 
you cannot get enough of what you don't really need. It's and I love that you said, talked about the finish line because I'm feeling there's this. Um, have you ever been to like a, a dog race or I've seen it on TV or something with these greyhounds? So there's these greyhounds breed of dogs that are trained to race, right? And so they have they have these bunnies, these mechanical bunnies that they're chasing. There's like you know pistol that goes off, a mechanical bunny that starts running um super fast and makes all these greyhounds go super duper fast faster than they would you know without a bunny otherwise they would just run all over the place and you know it makes them trainer the trainers eat them feed them the best food so they perform on these days on like game day right and, and but but if we just imagine for a second that the dog would actually catch up with the bunny like now now the dog actually catches up with the bunny bites the freaking bunny head off and it's just like a piece of metal like we would just what like our teeth would pop out and we just like fuck this this is what we've been running for what the fuck right <laughs> um so so the key is to remember like all of the success out there and the achievement and the accomplishments it's actually just a game we set up that game you know i mean i don't know if you set up the game but like if you are consciously aware hey we've got this whole success game set up to you know the whole proving our worthiness or our status out in the world that's actually all made up. Like, I don't need to prove it to the government, my parents or my, you know, our neighbors. Like, we don't need to impress people we don't know or care about, you know? <laughs> and um, so much of our lives activities are set up for like, you know, so that we don't get judged or whatever. But like, I think, I think in realizing as this, it's like, you get to fall in love with the game. So, so when you remove the finish line, of, I believe what begins to happen, for example, with sales, like I'm so committed to the mastery of it. I knew one day that I, if I decided to fall in love with it, where before I hated it and I sucked at it, but I knew if I decided to fall in love with it, not, not the outcome of it, right? Just getting it done so I have something, but like the process of it. When you fall in love with the process, whether it's life, sales, enrollment, coaching, whatever your mastery is, but whenever you fall in love with the mastery, the practice of it, then you can enjoy yourself while you're running it. You know that that fucking bunny has got some metal inside of it. Fuck that. But you know, it's fun to run though. It's fun to do the chase, you know? And when you remember that, then you can also say, hey, hang, hang on a second. Today is not a game day, you know? Today is the kind of day where I'm strolling in the fucking park with my boys, <laughs> you know? And, and you can start turning the whole thing around without having to, you know? The nose to the grindstone kind of metaphor. When my friend tells me that, it's, it's like she, she tells me, uh, Madeline, big shout out to Madeline. She keeps telling me like, Miro, are you doing this nose to the grindstone thing again? <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, shit, I guess I am. I guess I am. You know, and so we get to be disciplined and become disciples of love, you know, of self-love. Sometimes it's just not loving to push through the one lunch hours and doing the late nights and everything. And we can tell ourselves there's a good reason to. Yeah, you can make a good reason up for anything. But the reason you can't is the reason to must, you know. Maybe the reason you need to make more money is the reason why you need to take, you know, an eight-day retreat or something to go to Mexico, Tulum or something. Just an idea. I've got a retreat coming up. <laughs> um, just a plan to see there. Um, but, like, sometimes in order to get somewhere faster, it's like the opposite. Go into the opposite direction. It's like pulling back like a bow and arrow so you can let it fly. And it's all easier. You know, so I don't know. Tell me, like, have you had an experience? Um, I'm guessing you've had some experiences with this, too. Um, have you had an ex experience of either side of it where either, you know, you pulled back a little bit uh, and got some great results with it or you just kind of kept going and like totally didn't? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, before I answer that question, I just I'm thinking about a lot of really good things now. And I, I heard you mention a, an adventure retreat that you have coming up for those that are listening, definitely reach out to Miro and at least hear about what he's got going on in his philosophy around retreats. I think that they're so powerful and profound to really rest, reflect, recover and recharge so that we can step back into our lives and our businesses just with fresh energy and fresh version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. so. And heal, brother, because one of the biggest things I love doing at our retreats and our events, we have a live event on Friday as well, is the belief change, man. L literally things like it's hard to make money, right? It's, you know, what else do I always hear? Uh, if I stop working so hard, everything will fall apart. Like those are beliefs. And we can change beliefs like this. How, I mean, how long do you think it change, takes to change a belief? As 
long as you want it to take. I mean, you could change a belief here in five minutes. If you, tr if you just turn an I can't into an I can, into an I will, into an I'm doing, into a I am. I am. Boom. You just have to do it. And, you know, I, I have a story that I'll share with you. I, uh, I've shared it with you, Miro, but those listening haven't heard about this uh, debilitating foot injury that I had a little over well, a year and a half ago. I, I woke up one morning, I couldn't walk. And it took me about four months to get through a really regimented physical therapy program where I could walk five kilometers again. Oh. And through that, through that um, physical therapy experience, my therapist said, Scott, you should probably go see a psychologist because you're not doing right up there. Because there was a lot of I can't and limiting beliefs going on in my mind. I thought that I would never be able to ski again, hike again, bike again, do the things that I love to do. Well, I came to my next physical therapy session and I said, Hey, boss, I'm going to, I'm going to go hike to Everest base camp, go wow. hike to Everest base camp. So in that one week time frame, I'd spent the last four months just sabotaged. I was depressed, repressed. I couldn't like step into this person that could become capable of retraining my mind and body to actually hike to Everest base camp. I mean, I couldn't even wear shoes at that point. Right. So, I mean, how long does it take? It can take, it can happen right now on this live video for you. Mm -hmm. It can happen. But I think Miro, you say, you know, you, like your why has to be so strong that you could cry. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, why do you yeah. really want what you think you want? Why do you want that you, what that, which you don't believe you can have yet? Mm -hmm. I, um, uh, I was listening to you there a couple of minutes ago and you, you, you were talking about how you know, we, we have to pivot if we want different results. We have to pivot if we want different results. And I think of something called EVD, the EVD, extreme value delivery, extreme value delivery, extreme value delivery. That so, sounds like fight or downer. Yeah, extreme value delivery. So the, the value that I brought my clients a year ago will not get me more clients today. Mm. It won't. Even if I'm charging the same price level, it just won't. Because of time decay of value. The value that I brought a year ago can't be the same value that I brought today. It can't. It has to change. It has to evolve with me as my business evolves and grows. And as a result, I'll attract more clients. See, Miro, I think a lot of people come to you because they want more clients, right? The problem in my business is I don't have enough clients. I need more clients, but that's not the problem. The problem is the way that we're looking at the problem. If we were only to step back and step out of this selfish, self-centric space of I need more clients to... I want to serve more people and bring more value to people's lives, then clients will just naturally come to us in a great abundance. I think you're, uh, you're, you're about to write your first book, right, brother? Yeah, man. Mira is about to write his first book. And, uh, um, you know, the, the first book that I wrote, it's called Bridge, Define, Build, Ignite the Life of Your Dreams. And I wrote this book. So I can I make it money. again. It's Bridge. What's the subtitle? Bridge, Define, Build, Ignite the Life of Your Dreams. Love that. Love that. I wrote this book uh, about two and a half years ago. And self-admittedly, I wrote the book to make money, sell a bunch of copies, become a successful coach, master my craft. It was about me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't about EVD, extreme value delivery. Mm -hmm. And I just went out and I know that you're going to do this with the book you're about to write, Miro. I went out and I just recrafted everything. I revamped everything. It's called Prosperity in the Present, A Route mm -hmm. to Success and Inner Peace. And... I didn't write this book for me. It's not for me, dude. It's for my clients. It's for the world. It's so that they have a route that they can follow to where they want to get to. I don't care if I sell a thousand copies. I don't care, dude. I don't care. Yeah, man. It's so powerful, man. And cause I, I'm thinking about this too. And I'll share you like how I'm opening up the book, um, the little sneak preview. Um, and maybe a little story about how it came together. Um, but I can, as you're thinking about the me, 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 and like who it's really for, I'm thinking about legacy now, you know, because this is the thing, like future is not promised, you know, and people don't like to think about the inevitability of death, but that's going to happen. And here's the thing, and I know that, and I've actually made peace with it. And that's why I feel like I was able to decide to live my life to the fullest. And that's the thing, people are afraid of thinking about death and it happening because, oh, I just want to live my life without being afraid. It's like, well, if it's certain, then you don't worry about it. You feel clear about it, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you worry about things that are, you know, 
not like where you don't know what's going to happen but here's the thing too i guess it's my relationship with god universe spirit whatever like i am have a, like i feel like that's i know i have a knowing that that's like the lion king you know like well well, well mufasa is coming from this guy that kind of like talking to simba like i've had experiences like this i know many people he did where i have a knowing kind of, of what's sort of on the other side so and i've had some near-death experiences in my life and they all have woken me up to living my life to the fullest so so the way i'm opening my book up and and the question i'll pose here is imagine you know imagine you you log into your online banking and you have a hundred million dollars in the bank right you have a hundred million dollars in the bank um so for some of you billionaires, it's like, oh no, where did my $900 million go? But for the most of you, it's like, wow, this is amazing. That's like more money than I ever had. And that's amazing, right? So go ahead and take it in. You have $100 million in your bank account. How does that feel? Like, wow, you're now basically debt free, right? And you can literally go anywhere you want and you have pretty much all the experiences you desire. And everything is open up. Um, so money is no longer an issue or an excuse. And so now you are heading to the doctor and the doctor tells you, hey, Scott, or hey, and whoever's watching you, hey, you, <laughs> hey, Miro, um, lovely that you have your $100 million in the bank, but guess what? You got a terminal illness and now you have six months to live. That's it. You got six months. So now you have a scenario of $100 million in the bank and six months to live. What will you do? And I think the first thing most people will do, and I've thought about this a lot, um, is like, you know, get debt free and then maybe some really generous things, you know, where they're going to start giving more, you know, and then they'll like take care of their parents and like sort of everyone else. But at some point you get to this point, it's okay, everyone's taken care of. You still have, you know, $90 million in the bank. Now what? You know, and you have five months left. Now what? You know, and eventually we get to make a decision to do all the things we've always wanted to do to truly and fully live and what's going to become increasingly important i'm guessing it's actually not so much what it's actually going to be who and it's an empower like it's a it's a powerful moment because the people in your life make your life um i had this scenario where i had to experience this you know i had several near-death experiences but particularly in writing this book, this was just about two months ago. I was finishing an inner in workshop, like an inner personal workshop, I was doing a bunch of healing, I got clear on my purpose. And I was remember thinking, you know, it'd be cool to write that book someday. And I, I heard a voice, it's like, Samuel, you don't have time. I was like, what? And I told to the voice, I don't know, it was my, my subconscious mind, God, universe or whichever. It's like, what voice? Like, what do you mean you don't have time? It's like, yeah, you might die. It's like, what? how, when. And so the question I pose in my book is, if you knew, and I asked this on Facebook, if you knew when and how you will die, would you want to know? I'm going to ask you, Scott, if you knew when and how you will die, would you want to know? It's an interesting question. I saw it on your Facebook page today, actually. And I think about it once a week or so, you know, like, am I living in alignment with the vision that I actually want to be manifesting on a day-to-day -day basis? And if not, then what needs to change? Mm -hmm. It's a tough one to answer, man. Most people your, will say your no. question, your mm -hmm. answer to your question though, I wouldn't want to know. Yeah. I don't want to know. I don't I, because mm -hmm. it uh it would create anticipation, anxiety, and this feeling that that I'm running out of time. Running out of time. I think yeah. it would create a lot more fear. I've accepted that I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, dude. I'm gonna die. Yeah, but I also uh, I think about Steve Jobs when you're talking. Right? I mean, he died from terminal cancer, right? And he mm -hmm. had that hundred million, hundred billion in the bank. Money wasn't a problem for that man, right? Well, I also well, think about what I was gonna say. Do you know what what turned out to be important to him? Probably family. Yep. And his relationships. And I bet you, I don't know. I never talked to him. I haven't looked at his interviews, but. Um, based on some of his stories if he was lying there on his deathbed i bet he would regret some of the arguments and rude things that he said to people throughout his career yeah i'm i'm guessing i'm guessing you're right um i feel, my opinion on regret is that's a choice too 
I don't think that we're determined to have regret for making sort of the wrong choices because that would imply that there are the right choices. I actually believe that we all do absolute our best with the resources that we have. Everyone does. And it's just something I'm choosing to believe because that lens just makes life easier. <laughs> um, so we're all doing what we can with the resources that we have. And sometimes those are mental, emotional resources. You know, we're, when we're in a fear state, we're just acting from survival. Like, you know, that's how, how some of us are wired and that's okay. So, you know, I asked myself this question if I wanted to know, you know, when, how I would die. And so I tuned into sort of the creator. I started developing these psychic sort of abilities and I got a date, you know, I got a, like a, you got three to four years as a car accident and you don't have time to like write your book, but you should definitely write that book. It's like, oh shit. And so then, you know, I talked with my teacher, uh, Marie, big shout out to Marie for, for Theta Healing and uh, ask her like what I can do. And she's like, when you have a death door, you have a choice. It's not like this is going to happen to you and you have no choice around it. You have a choice. You can change the beliefs that have you believe that this is the time for you to go. And, uh, and I did. So I did some digging on like, what is the really the software? Like we talked about software earlier, right? What is the hardware, the software? Like if, if our brains or supercomputers are like the iPhone and, you know, we have these limiting beliefs and, and all, all kinds of beliefs that are running like these apps, they all serve a purpose. They all have a function. So I just needed to see what are the, what the hell is really going on and what needs to shift for me to change the state. And so the belief that I had, Scott, was if I don't live, uh, that, that if I don't live my life to the fullest, then I'm wasting it. It's like binary, right? If I don't live to the fullest, yeah, I'm for, wasting. Go ahead. For you, for you, how do you know when you're living your life to the fullest? Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Yeah. So, and you said extreme value delivery earlier, and I love that. I believe that we all have a purpose here, a God-given purpose on earth. There's only one that we decide, like, hey, it's my mission in life that we can do internally. We can evoke a purpose, a mission from moment to moment, you know, for this period of my life, this is my purpose, right? But I also know that we have a God-given purpose too. And when you align yourself with that, and maybe your intentional purpose with your God-given purpose, and you do what you're meant to do, you experience extreme flow states. You start showing up in rooms and audiences in conversations where you're serving at your highest level, you know? I'm, I'm imagining you know, for a speaker, it's going to be on stage in front of the right audience. There's that one sort of signature speech or talk where they're just like transforming the minds and hearts of all of those people in that moment. It's their divine timing where everything in their life has, you know, led up to this one moment for them to go drop that knowledge. For MLK, maybe it's the, was the I have a dream speech, you know, for, you know, for Mozart, you know, maybe was playing a symphony. Oh, there you go. He has it right there. I love that. Love that. <laughs> And, you know, I think we all have a purpose. I think we all have greatness, uh, you know, inside of us. I know that for a fact. And so I believe that our value that we have to give to the world when we align with this is at its, at, at, at its finest. Um, and, and the dichotomy of this is that's also all part of the game. It's also all part of the game because value is not in what you do. It's it's inherent, you know, like the creators, the, the God, I'm guessing God's perspective, universe's perspective, it doesn't go, it's like, here's this magnificent sequoia tree, you know, uh, you know, those sequoia trees in Redwood Forest, right? It doesn't go like, oh, here's a little sequoia seed. That's just a shitty little seed. That's a worthless piece of seed. But this tree is magnificent. It doesn't do that. Like the little seed goes, the, the little seed itself doesn't go, I'm just a small little insignificant fucking seed. I'm a piece of shit, little fucking not good enough. I can't be good seed. It's like, I'm a sequoia, <laughs> you know? And so is all of us and all of you watching this, like you are, you know, one with your full potential here now. And also everything else is an illusion part of the game, you know? Like one of my roommates in college, we used to play this game and make no sense to me at the time. And he would come into my room and say, hey guys, what me? I'm like, what? that you lost the game i'm like what what game he's like yes that's the game so you lost it oh, i'm like oh okay he's like yeah the game is that when you're aware of the game you lost the game it's like wow so like later like, it took me years later that i realized like that's actually how life is it's like 
and it's not losing the game. It's like just being aware of like all of this shit that we're doing here is like a big video game illusion. It's like a game that we're playing. It's all part of the big, you know, lie that somehow we're separate, that there's somehow somewhere to get to, something to accomplish that is not already here now perfect. Because abundance is an inside job. You know what I mean? Like literally, like we talk about like the the the, the grind, like the hustle trap. If you look at you know, your nine-year-old version of, uh, my son is five years old right now, Elliot. You know, if I ask him, I did, I did this just for fun. Ask him, hey, Elliot, what would you do with a hundred dollars? And then he said, um, I don't know, like I buy everything I want. I'm like, okay, what do you want? I, was, he's like, I want ice cream. I'm like, okay, so I give you a hundred dollars. You're going to buy ice cream? It's like, yes. Yeah, so what kind of ice cream? It's like, I want Jenny's ice cream. Okay. That's $5 per pint. So you want all of this money spent on ice cream. He said, yes, okay, cool. So you, go, you would get 20 Jenny's ice creams and that's all you want? You'd be perfectly happy? And you say, yes, that's all I want, perfect. So literally, you know, obviously it's easy to see, you know, that when he had, if, if hypothetically he would get $100 and spend it on 20 ice creams, he would get to the point, it's like, hey, you know what? That doesn't make me as happy as I thought it would, you know? He would get to the point. He eats, he eats two pints, you know, <laughs> Ice cream tummy ache, right? <laughs> right, right. For some reason, you would have this weird experience where that's not exactly what he wanted, you know? And, yeah. you know, and maybe your 16 year old or 18 year old version of you, looking at exactly where you are right now, would go, Holy shit, Scott, like you're way further than I ever thought you would like ever get to. Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, you're amazing, you know? And still we're here like, oh, this is not enough. Like six figures is not enough. You know, seven figures is not enough. Like there's not enough house. There's not enough this. There's not enough vacation. There's not enough time, you know? So all of that is a fucking illusion. You see what I'm saying? It's all a game. It's just like a level of perspective that we're looking at the container and going, oh, it's half empty or it's only this much when the truth is mm. it's an imaginary fucking container and it's actually all the fucking ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's as if when we change our perspective of our present problems, solutions become a possibility. When we change our perspective on our present problems, our solutions become a possibility. Yes, mm. that sounds like something you've written in a book. <laughs> I just wrote it on your Facebook Live book. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's it. This is the book right here, I guess. Bro, thank you, man. Let me for letting me rant there a little bit. That was fun. I enjoy that. Yeah, that was a good conversation today, Miro. It's always good to reconnect with you, brother. And uh, yeah, you want to tell everybody else a little more about your book, your retreat you have coming up, and some other and the live event. Yeah, so it's all about manifest. You know, and manifest X is 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 your dream. X is your dream. It's like what you actually want and the ability to manifest and create whatever you want at will, you know, like that. And um, I've learned and I'm still mastering, I've committed myself to the mastery of these skill sets, these practices and these habits to create what I want in my life. And I've achieved some great results with my clients in the process as well. And some friends as well. So shout out to all my friends who have been part of it. Uh, and it's really, you know, what we do at our events, what we do at our retreats, it always comes down to the inner work and the money game. You know, they say 80% of your success is like your psychology, your perspective, your mindset. Um, and I would add to that, you know, your energy, you know, like there's things beyond this mind and, and body connection. There's something greater, like the higher super consciousness, you know, that we can consistently connect to, like the life force from Star Wars, you know, the force. And I, you know, I've really just been mastering and I'm on the journey to and committed to the mastery of that game. And when we make those inner shifts, our whole life can change like a simple perspective shift. So, so whether it's in our book or in our events, like really mastering right, our retreats, really mastering the, the power of the subconscious mind is, is where it's at and stepping in our leadership and our power. And the other 20% is the money mindset. You know, so many people say, oh, money's not that important, or I don't really want the money, and I don't care about the money. But think about how much time and energy every single day we spend, you know, obtaining it, <laughs> getting more of it. So if it's not that important, you know, then why would we spend so much energy around it, you know? So I think just admitting that there is value in it and then finding the nuances, like how can I make it mean something to me but not about me. How, how can I decouple my sense of self-worth and who I am from, you know, obtaining this magic potion that helps think people get, you know, the joy and the love and abundance that they want. 
And the, their skill sets, it's the marketing, communicating your message in a way that has people reaching out to you and, and resonate with it. There's the sales, right? The, the nasty S word that people have so much trauma and conditional conditioning around. Uh, which I learned to fall in love with and undo the layers of beliefs there. And it's it's all practice. And so that's what the book's all about and some really inspiring stories and exercises. That's what we do at our event this Friday, one o'clock. If you want to join that, drop like a hashtag ManifestX and uh, I'll, send, I'll send you an invite. It's the it's first 10 people are free, Scott. So you should come. It's Friday, one o'clock central time. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to be there. Um, I'll see you there. <laughs> nice. Um, sweet, brother. Do you want to share anything with our people before we hop off? Hey, if you guys want to learn more about my story and what I do, just hop over to peakprosper.com. And yeah, I'm all about helping people transform their inner pain to inner peace so that they can create more outward prosperity and abundance in their lives. So I love you all. Thank you for showing up and listening to us today. Enjoy your afternoon. Peace and prosperity. <laughs>